Veronica Harris Show, we have a guest who is a poet, a novelist, and a writer. Veronica, why is that important to me? Because I have no idea. Because in order to be totally healthy, you got, can't neglect your mental, emotional, or spiritual health. And writing is a great, great way to express yourself and get those emotions out, get those feelings out. So I'm going to try to learn from our guest today how to, you know, get my pen going so I can, you know, express myself and get to my total optimal well-being. So you're going you're gonna to unleash the power of the pen. There you go. All right. Well, today's guest is Miss Angel Wood. She is the author of Clutch and also a book of poetry called A Spring in the Desert, as well as Flame. So she's going to be here to tell us about what she's been doing, what she's doing, and what she's going to do. And maybe we can learn a little bit about the writing process. Should be a great show. Stay tuned. Welcome back. And today we are here with Angel Wood. She is a poet and playwright and has just completed her debut novel, Clutch. She was a featured spoken word artist on the intro track to Jay-Z's American Gangster album. She worked years in the entertainment industry with Tyler Perry, Idris Elba, Will Packer, and Rainforest Film, and a plethora of others. She is the daughter of framed funk musician Mark Wood Jr. of Lakeside. She was born in Atlantic City, New Jersey, and moved into the projects of Dayton, Ohio with her family shortly thereafter. The Bella Vista Estates, where Angel called home, was a world of drug infestation and violence. It was a war zone, and like any other war zone, everybody leaves with scars. She had to deal with crack and heroin addiction in her own home, her family being torn apart, and her friends dying way too soon. In spite of everything Angel was exposed to, she did not allow herself to be influenced by her negative environment. Instead, she charted a new course, graduating high school with the highest grade point average in the city. She became the first person in her family to finish college, receiving her bachelor's degree in political science and criminal justice from The Ohio State University. Angel started writing poetry very early in life as a way to express her thoughts and feelings. Poetry was a sole anchor for her as she navigated her way out of the projects. Even as gunshots rang outside of her bedroom window, poetry offered an escape from the violence and confusion. With the pen, Angel found her voice and with her words, she, she hopes to give voice to those who have yet to find theirs. And then, here we are. Angel, thanks, welcome for the, to the show. Thank you for having me. Leave me alone. <laughs> um, first things first. Yeah. All right. Um, writing, you sleep a lot of sitting, right? Mm -hmm. You're not burning a lot of calories. What activities do you do to keep yourself in shape? Because you look like you're in pretty good shape. Well, I love dancing, so I go to a dance studio. Um, I also cycle, so I have a road bike. I'll go out and ride my bike, um, walking, going to the gym every now and then. That's not my favorite activity, but I do it when I need to. So, yeah, I stay pretty active. Okay. Yes. Once again, you did not introduce me. Oh, oh, okay. yeah. So here we are on the Veronica Harris Show, and my co-host today <laughs> is the Veronica Harris. Yes, thank you. Thank you for introducing me on my show. How you doing today? I'm doing well. You're doing a good mm -hmm. job hosting. Keep it going. Okay. All right, you can go back to what you're doing. Tell them why I'm hosting. What? Because you overslept. <laughs> <laughs> go so, ahead. Back to Angel. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so we talked about your activities because you're in such great shape. So, mm -hmm. you know, both of us are health and physical education teachers. Okay. And... um. Sports for sports for, uh, enthusiasts. Yes. We're not fanatics. We're enthusiasts. Yes. Okay. And um, that's pretty much what we're talking about on the show. But what I like to talk about with you is um, something that will relating to our um, our teaching with being health teachers. Yeah. Um, writing is very therapeutic, right? Yes, I would say so. So it would contribute to your mental, spiritual, emotional health. Absolutely. All right. Um. So how did you get into writing? Well, I started writing very early in life. It was a way for me to express myself. Uh, I come from a very creative, although rough environment, and I needed to find an outlet. My great-grandmother was a school teacher. She provided me with books even before I could read, so I was always, I learned how to read very early. 
And from that, uh, I began to love words, and I found that I could express myself through poetry and plays from the time I was around seven years old. Oh, um, it was more, more than a hobby for you. It seemed with all the people you work with, do you actually make a living writing? I do. Um, I have another occupation as well, but yes, I do make a living and make money writing. Okay. Um, the uh, Rainforest Films, you write films or? Well, I do write films. Um, I worked on uh, the production, Tyler Perry's production. I worked with Rainforest Films. That was more on the production end. I did not write on uh, those projects, but um, I do write um, screenplays as well. Okay. Yeah. And Veronica. Yes. Um, do you do any writing? Yes, I do. What kind of writing do you do? Actually, you know, from a young age, I wrote a lot of nonfiction, you know, especially with the creative writing classes that we took in high school in addition mm -hmm. to the regular lit English lit that we had to take. And um, very much a voracious reader, love to read. What are some of your fam uh, favorite authors or po poets? Uh, well, my ultimate favorite poet is Maya Angelou, of course, mm -hmm. who I had the pleasure of meeting when I was working on a Tyler Perry film. Um, I also love Toni Morrison, uh, Robert Frost, as far as poets go, Edgar Allan Poe, mm. um, which is one of our, you know, local <laughs> yes, greats. Yes, yeah. Yes, yeah, so. Both the Raven. Yes, um, also I'm into Shakespeare and it just pretty much runs the gamut. Um, I love Anne Rice, mm. um, Stephen uh, King, mm -hmm. of course, for the, you know, horror. Mm -hmm. Um, aspects. So I love um, anything that is a good read and a page turner. Right. Mm -hmm. I would say a lot of people that you mentioned were are very much page turners and people that I have read as well. I mean, but it definitely seems like you go from the gamut. I mean, you have Robert Frost to the road less of the road less traveled yes. to Shakespeare, Friends, Romans, Countrymen, Lin Me or mm -hmm. Julius Caesar yeah. to, I mean, you know, I mean, just everybody, Anne Rice, Interview with the Vampire, right. love that. I mean, I read the book, but also love the movie as well. Yeah. So you definitely have a lot uh, going on there. So I was looking at your books, and you brought some with, it, with you, and I was noticing that on one of your titles, it was called A Spring in the Desert. Yes. And I noticed that when I look at the graphics, and I take into consideration your background, you know, where you grew up, I see it as sort of like a metaphor for your upbringing, where, for instance, where you came from was um, can maybe considered like a barren place, a dangerous place, and deserts can be barren and it could mm -hmm. be dangerous. But within that place, um, I would say with your family, I mean, especially your great-grandmother providing with the books, there was an oasis, a place of rebirth with the spring. Yes. So I see that I see that as something that was brought here in your poetry. Yes, yes. Would you I, say so? Yes, absolutely. You are correct. Uh, where I grew up, it was a very tough, harsh environment, but there was also beauty there, mm -hmm. and um, it nurtured my gift and it, it nurtured my poetry because it allowed me to translate what I saw and what I experienced, and some of the pain and sorrow and joy and beauty in an artistic way, and it came out through poetry. Right. And do you ever think you would have gone into music? Because I see your father was of the group Lakeside. Yes. Fantastic Boys. Come along yes. and ride oh, on that sad. fantastic boy. You don't know that? Yes. I yes. mean, he doesn't, but you, you know, you have this background in music and you uh, were able to be on the soundtrack. You were on the intro track for J uh, Jay-Z's American Gangster album. Love the movie. Yeah. This that was robbed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but so how did that happen for you? Absolutely. It was kind of a fluke situation. Um, Idris was interested, Idris Elba was interested in, uh, yeah, he had, well, everyone loves Idris, yes. but he was interested in submitting for the Jay-Z American Gangster Project, and he knew that I wrote, so he asked me to come and read some of the lyrics that he had written, and he was going to record it, so mm -hmm. we ended up co-writing it together, oh. and when he heard me speaking it, he asked me to get involved with it, so we did it as sort of a duet. So how did you meet, how did you get involved with Idris Elba? Not involved, but how did you connect to collaborate with Idris Elba? Uh, we had worked on a few films together, him in front of the camera, me behind the camera, okay. so, and that's how we met. Um, okay. First on a Rainforest film, and then on yeah. a couple Tyler Perry films. Okay. Oh, all right. 
right? Um, I know which one that he was in. Um, but um, so what do you do behind the camera? Uh, I was just working on the production, so okay. I had various various roles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, that is really interesting because I think you have you kind of like everywhere, and this all comes from a person who went to the Ohio oh, State. Oh, absolutely. But <laughs> your degrees are in political science and criminal justice. Yes. Yeah. So ac actually, it's criminology, uh, which is the study of deviant behavior, ah. which kind of explains more like why I write about the topics that well, I, I write about. I was about to say that kind of. Okay. Yes. So my uh, my novel is very political. Uh, mm -hmm. It is strategic. It talks about the politics of the streets, the politics of the government, and also a, a lot of the deviant uh, behavior that kind of runs those elements. It's funny you said politics of the streets, and I like that term. And we're going to explore that a little bit more. So, Gregory, you get prepared with when your correction. When we come back from break. We taught him how to hit a baseball. How to hit a receiver. The strike zone. The net. You taught him how to hit the upper court. You even taught him how to hit the open man. But how much time have you spent teaching him what not to hit? When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. We, we just, just finished dinner, dinner and, and it was time, time for homework. homework. He I hates hate homework. homework. It makes no sense. I don't know how he finds anything in his backpack. I can't find my backpack. Finally, Finally we found, found my his assignment. assignment. He rushed through it. I wonder if he even learned anything. I wasn't going to get it right, so I just wanted to get back to playing my video game. At least I'm good at that. I couldn't even read his handwriting. Holding the pencil makes my hand hurt. I know he's bright. Why is it so hard for me? He's I'm just trying as try hard as I harder. can. When you can see learning and attention issues from their side, you can be on their side. That's why there's understood.org, a free online resource for the parents of the one in five kids with learning and attention issues. Here you'll get personalized recommendations, practical tips, daily access to experts, and more. Go from misunderstanding to understood.org. And we're back. Veronica swoops in for the steal. Okay, so we're back with our guest, Miss Angel Wood, and we want to talk. We left off with politics of the street. Okay, yes. we, everybody knows uh, we talk about politics when we usually refer to government, whether it be federal right. or local. What do you mean by that statement, politics of the streets? Well, when I talk, the streets be talking. Oh yes, <laughs> the streets definitely be talking. But when I talk about politics of the streets, there's a definite hierarchy there. There are uh, those that are in charge, that are, you know, running things. There are people that are, um, they're lieutenants. There are people that are taking the orders. And there are definite rules that are not to be broken. Mm -hmm. uh, there are also, um, you know, legitimate interests that are maybe involved in the street interests and how some of those things may uh, work together to further the agenda that may not benefit us all. So the mm -hmm. politics of the streets can be uh, interwoven with the actual politics as which is what happens in my book. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a actual mayor that is involved in the street politics that mm -hmm. is going on. So it's just when I speak about it, I speak about the intermingling and the muddying up of uh, the legitimate world and the underworld. That is very interesting. So, Gregory, your turn. Go ahead. So, um, you initially a poet, and you say this is your first novel. Yeah. So, moving from poetry to novels, what was that like? Is it more challenging? I know everybody always wants to write a novel, myself included. Mm -hmm. The great American novel. <laughs> I mean, how difficult is it? Well, it takes a lot longer. Poetry is just so natural for me. Um, I don't sit down and say, okay, I'm going to write a poem today. It's something that I do under uh, inspiration. If a 
an inspiration comes to me, a poem comes to me, then I just, I take whatever napkin or whatever I have available and write that. With a novel, it's more planned. Uh, it takes a lot longer. You have to really think through your story structure, your plot point. So it is a real exercise. It takes, it's creative, but it's also very technical as well. So a lot of people have stories, but you really have to have the dedication to be able to sit there and get it out and then edit it and edit it and edit it, you know, to get it where you want it. So uh, poetry to me is just like breathing, but, you know, mm -hmm. writing a novel that was a true exercise in creativity. You talk about the creative part, and then you also talk about the technical part. Um, and I think that's probably what a lot of people don't know, like the process and like mm -hmm. in basketball and in sports, they always talk about there's a process, you know, you got to follow the process to get from, you know, point A to point B. But there's also a very much a process in writing right. for you to get to point A to point B. And in sports, we all we always hear about the failures that many people will have. I mean, mm -hmm. I failed a lot. You've had yours. Um, is it? Is it easy to, or is it hard to develop that thick skin? Because I'm sure um, you've heard no before. Oh, and yeah. to have to pick yourself up because you think, oh my God, this is the best story ever. This is the great American novel. Right. But somebody says, no, this is not what we want right now. Right. So how do you deal with those failures? Well, or well, I really don't look at it as a failure or a setback. I look at it as this is my story. Mm -hmm. And nothing is going to stop me from telling my story. Mm -hmm. I write stories uh, about where I'm from, about people that I know about, you know, what I can relate to. And I know that there is an audience for that. So I really, I mean, I've heard no's before. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's part of the process. But that has nothing to do with me writing and me getting my story mm -hmm. out there. You know, everything is not for everyone. Mm -hmm. Some people told me when I first started uh, to produce my poetry that no one buys poetry. Mm -hmm. Well, they were wrong, mm -hmm. you know. And when I was out with my books and promoting my books, there were, you know, people lined up to buy poetry and were so grateful that there was poetry available. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you just have to be passionate about what you do and really believe in getting your story told. So, do you feel like you give voice to the voiceless sometimes? Yes. You're able to give voice to the voiceless? Yes, yes, um, absolutely, because um, if I don't tell my story, which is a very unique story, mm -hmm. who will? Okay. And my story is representative of those like me. You know, and I want to give them voice because they may not sit down and write their story mm -hmm. or they may not have been fortunate enough to live mm -hmm. long enough to tell their story. Ooh, yeah, that's you know. mm -hmm. fortunate enough to live long enough. Wow. Yes. Because sometimes I, we just think maybe a person just doesn't get the opportunity because they're not exposed to the, you know, the right, I don't say the right people, but exposed to the person who can get the story out. Yeah. But sometimes people actually, you're right, don't get a chance to live long enough to see that story told. Yes, and especially where I'm from, a lot of people that I came up with did not make it and are not still here. Mm -hmm. So I feel like it is my duty to speak for them. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. It seems like you're doing a very good job. So what are you working on now? Like, where is, what is Angel doing now? Well, I have, the writing? I have two plays. Uh, one is Maria's Window, which is a two-person play about uh, two lovers that are separated by a tragedy mm -hmm. and it's a surrealistic uh, mm -hmm. play and I also have a play that is based on my first poetry book which is called A Spring in the Desert so mm -hmm. I'm working on getting those produced and I'm currently working on my next novel which I cannot say the title of. Right of course of course you want to keep yes. us <laughs> in suspense, you want to keep the people in suspense. So do you, um, are these plays going to be here in the area where people can see them or? Yes, yes, so I'm going to produce uh, the plays here and also in Atlanta, mm. Georgia to maybe begin you, with. Maybe you should maybe audition. You should really? Audition. Really? <laughs> you, should you should audition. audition. <laughs> you should audition. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, we do, you know, yeah, okay. But anyway, um, so that's what you're doing now and obviously that's coming up in the near future, yeah. but what are some more of your longer distance? Uh, goals or plans? 
Well, I definitely want to do more in film, which I'm very passionate about. So I've completed a screenplay. I'm working on a screenplay for Clutch as well. And I want to move uh, in that direction without giving up my novels and poetry and plays, but definitely move more into the film world as far as producing my own work. Well, you are definitely, I guess you say, like in the uh, vein of your one of your favorite authors is Zora Neale Hurston. Yes. Hurst. Hurston or Hurston. Hurston, yeah. yes, Hurston. Mm. Um, much a Renaissance woman. But we cannot forget you are also a mother. Yes. And we as being, well, he's a father. I'm not anything. I'm just an auntie. Uh, <laughs> That's we, important. Um, we are very much into education and definitely from your bio, I mean, graduating with the highest grade point. Usually we say, oh, you know, get the highest GPA in the school, but you had the highest GPA in the I city. Know. I know. That's amazing. And you also have a son who is on a full scholarship at Vanderbilt. Yes. Studying yes. economics. Yes. The Ivy of the South. Yes. And playing football. Absolutely. Wow. So obviously education was a big part of your upbringing and you've obviously instilled that into your son. Absolutely. He is a, an amazing student. He graduated from DeMatha here oh, you. Uh, mm -hmm. and uh, he was a great student there and he is doing excellent. Just got uh, SEC all academic honors so That's I will big. be getting my second plaque yes. <laughs> sent so I can hang somewhere in my home. That is big. But yes, he is an amazing student, a great musician as well mm -hmm. and uh, a great football player. So he's, well, he's, he's taking like, after his mom. Well, not with the football. Well, I mean, but with, the, you know, the arts and yeah. the academics, I mean, definitely. Absolutely. It. And, you know, that's important because as much as we think, sometimes we think that people will just come out a certain way, they aren't. They have to be trained in that way. And, you know, obviously to make education important to a person, they have to be exposed to it. So yes, that's yes. just important. Yes, and I definitely nurtured him from the beginning. Um, I nurtured him as far as education, as far as reading, because that was what sparked me. Mm -hmm. um, and also with his music, made sure he had every instrument available to him. I just wanted him to find his passion and, and find his way, so. Well, it looks like you found it. Yeah. That was very good. Gregory, do you have any last questions? Or yeah, you um. Because you've been quiet. The, uh, Grade point average, highest in the city. Yeah. I mean, top, or you like top five? Or, no. you know, sometimes stats kind of get, you know. I know, that claim sounds bit. so outrageous, yeah, outrageous, right? But I, I was actually on the news. See, for she got for fat, that, she got receipts. Right. yeah, right. I was I was on the news for that. I did not realize I was I had my head down. and was just focusing on you know getting a scholarship to Ohio State because I could not have afforded to go any other way. And um, I had a four seven grade point average, which was the highest in the city. And the news contacted me. So mm, really, really quickly. So you must have had some great study skills, some tricks. Would you, some kind of special food that helped you retain information? What, what, what would you say? Is there one thing, one trick? One trick. My trick was to put Tupac in my headphones so I could drown out whatever nonsense was going on outside uh, of my house and just uh, study. I was also an athlete in school, so I would get home really late, stay up to like 3 o'clock in the morning and study. But. But, I, I, you know, I, I was very dedicated. It was either get a scholarship or stay where I was. So I was really oh, driven okay. to, right. you know, get out. Motivation. Well, that is good. So we're going to wrap up right now. And when we come back, we are going to do what is Gregory thinking because he is the pseudo host today. So stay with us and we'll be right back. Oh! Checking your fantasy league? Nah, just my 401k statement. Mm. Nice. Where'd you find the money for that? I've just been saving a little every month. <laughs> I can't seem to save anything. Well, what about all this? What about the money you're spending? <laughs> what money? It's gone before I can get my hands on it. I got a pizza for a Todd. Hey, can somebody spot me? When it comes to financial stability, don't get left behind. It's 547. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. And here we are, the segment of the show where we talk about what's Gregory thinking. And I share to you all what I'm thinking, and Veronica and, and Angela again will also come in and, you know, chime in, give some of their tidbits. Veronica, you know what I'm thinking today? No, I know what Veronica is thinking. That's what it says back there. I asked you about what I'm thinking. But I'm not. I'm thinking about what's the All right, so let me tell you. Okay. Today I'm thinking that so many amateur poets, myself included, have this poetry that we wrote in the notebooks and stuff. But as Angel told us, your story is unique, 
and you, you need to not be ashamed of sharing your story, but also in sharing your story, you'll be speaking up for someone else who has went through something similar, something they can relate to. So I'm challenging all you all out there, you too, Veronica, go ahead and find your old poetry, go find an open mic, and, and share your words. I've done that before. You have? Yes, I have, up in Jersey. Mm -hmm. I've done that before. Okay, um, what do you think about that? Eh? What do I think about it? Yeah. I think that if you have something to share, if you have a talent, if you have a gift, you should definitely share it. You shouldn't light your light and put it up under the bed as to share with other people, and you never know who you're going to bless when you do that. Mm -hmm. yeah, that is true. Mm -hmm. By sharing, actually by sharing, not only do you help others, but you also help yourself. And that's what I, I that's the big thing I get with sharing. Um, as a teacher, I always tell my students, I say, you know what, hopefully, obviously, I hope you learn from me, but I also learn from you. As we go through this journey and as, you know, you discover information, as you add experience to your life, I learn from you because I see what you do. And like I said, everybody has their own unique story. Everybody brings something different to the table. That's why I like teaching health, I believe, because it's not always the same thing. Like the War of 1812 is always going to be in 1812. Two plus two is always going to be four. But whatever is going on in health is going to change because it is so much life-centric, meaning it's centric to your life, and your experiences are different. So you're always going to bring something different to the table. So by sharing, you know, hopefully I help you, but you also help me. And you shared at Open Mic? Where was that? Oh, it was in New Jersey. When? There was a little cafe. Oh, man. What did you share? Early 2000s. Um, there was a poetry. Was uh, there was a poem. Crickets? Did they, did they boo you? No. <laughs> the they clapped. There was snaps. Oh. All around. <laughs> snaps. All around. All right. How about all right. cricket and boo? All right. You ever did an open mic? Yes, you I like have. Those? Um, I do. I don't do them that often, but I do uh, like to go up there every now and then. Well, Angel, we, I thank you for coming on the show. We can find Angel at her website, www aspringinthedesert.com. Her, twi her Twitter handle is at Ms. Angel Wood. Miss Angel Wood. Miss and Angel then her Wood. Facebook, oh, it says Facebook profile. Well, then obviously they can type in your name. Yes, I am at Miss Angel Wood on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook as well. Okay, so that's what we can find. I'm definitely going to start following you because, I don't know, we might try to uh, uh, audition. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So you wait What about you? Um, I'm gonna try to write a book. Oh, okay. Well, do what you're gonna <laughs> do. Right? But a book. we like Miss Angel. We like what she talked about. We want yeah. you to come back. Absolutely. Make sure you share because we want to share with our viewers your next piece of work. Absolutely. And um, yeah, just keep doing what you're doing. Uh, thank you so much. I will. I enjoy being here. I love the show. All right. Thank you. Thank well, you. thank you. Thank you to all our viewers, and we'll look forward to seeing you next time. And as we always say, deuces. <laughs>